I wanted to start the video by saying this is one of the longest projects I've been working on, but then I realized all of my recent projects took me one to two years from the point I had an idea in my head to the point I started the build. So it's not something special from that perspective, but... Nevertheless, it would be a dream dream build because in this year and a half since I started the project, I've managed to buy all parts I've been dreaming of, including trick stuff peak hollow brakes that have 12 months waiting period. I guess there are some benefits of uh, long builds. I'm planning to route all hoses and cables internally. And from my previous videos, you know I like fully invisible cable routing. I've done this on my uh, Rode Specialized Aetis S-Works frame. And I've also done this on my gravel sire frame. But on a mountain bike, this is a different level of complexity. I counted like six different cables and hoses and wires that I need to root internally and hide. Um, so it would be a very difficult but interesting project. And with the hidden suspension on the new Scott Spark frame, this should allow me to achieve a super clean look. As always in my videos, I will first talk about the components that I have for this build and why I chose them and weight them. Uh, and then I will build the bike and check the final weight. But feel free to jump between the chapters. So let's start with the first and main component of every build the frame. And if you followed my channel long enough, you would know that I had a previous generation Scott Spark that in the lightest configuration weighed less than 9 kilograms. You can watch the video about it on my channel. And in the down country configuration, it weighed less than 10 kilograms. So this included the dropper paws, bigger tires, and 120 millimeter fork. When Scott released their new Spark with hidden suspension and hidden cables, it was love from the first sight until I checked the price. In the lightest configuration with HMX SL frame set, a similar frame set that I had on my previous generation Scott Spark, the bike costs 15,000 pounds. This is crazy. And it weighs 10.3 kilograms, which is not very impressive, to be honest. So I decided to do what I've done many times before with other bikes, is buy the cheapest configuration, which is Scott Spark RC Home version, uh, that cost me 3,600 pounds in the UK last year. I think they've raised the prices this year. And then take all components of the bike, sell them, and then build the new bike using lighter components on that frame. I'm pretty sure I can build the bike which would be lighter than 10 kilograms, including pedals, which is half a kilogram roughly lighter than the most expensive version of Scott Spark RC, and spend much less on it. So, at least this is the idea. And even though this is a heavier HMF frame, it weighs just 2,182 grams, including all hardware and also the chain protection. This is roughly 250 to 310 grams heavier than the lightest HMX SL frame, uh, depending on how Scott weighs their frames, including hardware, excluding chain protection or vice versa. And it was a good surprise for me because Scott doesn't show the weight of their HMF frames on their website, so I was ready for something around 2.3 kilograms. To reduce the weight of the frame and to achieve this custom look, I sent it to Jack, who painted my ATSS Works frame. He stripped it to bare carbon and applied this glossy clear coat on top. Check out the result. A silver leaf logos can't be applied directly to raw carbon. Jack had to apply two layers of clear coat. Therefore, the weight saving was 60 grams, which is less than expected, but I'm super happy with the high gloss raw finish of the frame. It looks amazing. I've also replaced the original rear axle with extra light to save another 35 grams. Guys, before we continue, I want to ask you a favor. If you like this video, don't forget to put a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel, hit that bell button. This all helps my channel to grow and make more videos like this. I appreciate it. Moving on to the fork. 
I originally planned to buy Fox 34 Stepcast uh, with Kashima coating, which is a factory version. But then when I started buying parts for this build, I realized I quite like the silver components. So eventually I decided to go for a cheaper version, which is 34 Performance Elite with 120 millimeter travel that comes with black stanchions, but has the same weight as the factory version. And I've also replaced the original axle with extra light to save 15 grams. I've also replaced the original logos on the fork with my twisted wheels logos and removed anodizing from the caps to make them silver and match the rest of the bike. I've also slightly modified the top of the steer tube to allow for internal cable routing. I'll be using intent fork expansion plug that will allow me to route two cables inside the steer. I'll be using a fork transfer cell dropper with 100 mm travel. This is already one of the lightest droppers on the market, but to make it even lighter, I've replaced the original cradle with the carbon plate from Beyond Cycles, black titanium bolts, and some aftermarket clamps. So the new weight is mind-blowing 337 grams for a 100 mm dropper. It's probably not a surprise for you that I like Beyond saddles because they're comfortable, they are very light. And for this build, I'll be using Beyond Setka saddle, which is the lightest carbon saddle with 3D printed padding in the world. Of course, I could use Beyond Saddler saddle to save another 50 grams, but I think Setka works much better on an off-road bike. To achieve the weight that I want, I need to use the lightest possible wheels, and these wheels are something special. So special that I decided to make a separate video about building them, so check it out on my channel. So Pete, this is the missing piece. Excellent, thank you. Through here, like that. This is my Fastports Ultralight XC 30mm rims. It's very nice. The weight will be tiny as well. Let's find out. So that's the rear. Promising 530. There we go. Over one! No! Ah! <laughs> Without the finger, I'll zoom in. Oh my god! Well under a kilo. They're built on extra light boost hubs in silver color, bird polylight spokes, and Fastport's new ultralight XC rims that weigh 290 grams each. As you can see in my video, I had white logos on the wheels, but I've covered them with black vinyl to match the black silver looks of the rest of the bike. As for the tires, I'll be using Pirelli Scorpion XC RC light tires in size 2.4 inch, which up until recently was considered a very wide tire for a cross-country bike but modern cross-country bikes are moving towards the trail bikes direction and having tried 2.35 Vittoria Metzcal tires on my previous Scott, I really like this extra volume and Pirelli tires are really really light for their size so there is not much weight penalty. To allow for fully integrated invisible internal cable routing I needed a handlebar that would have holes for the hoses and other cables. And the only readily available option that I found was FSA KFX SIC handlebar. The design reminds me of the previous generation Scott Spark handlebar, which I quite like. It came with the logos that I removed for a clean raw carbon looks and with spaces that were designed specifically for this handlebar. I've modified the top of the handlebar as I'm planning to route front brake and fork lockout through the steer tube. I've also made a hole in the headset cover to route the remaining cables and hoses to the frame. In total, there will be six cables, hoses and wires running through the handlebar. So wish me luck in routing this all internally. The weight is 10 grams lighter than 2022 Syncros handlebar in the same size, which is 80 by 740. But if you add Syncros spaces to the equation, FSA would be 20 grams lighter and it looks smaller and cleaner. Grips will be extra light, lightest grips on the market, and I'll be using tune bar ends. Moving on to the group set. I'll be building bike on SRAM axis, but instead of the standard shifter, I'll use Zerbil that is connected to SRAM bleep box. And I'll hide this bleep box inside the frame so you won't see it. I originally was planning to disassemble the SRAM shifts and connect Zerbil directly to the PCB board, but then decided to go with the setup with SRAM bleep box that I've tested before. For that reason, I had to extend the original wires. That's why they look kinda rusta. 
but this will all be hidden inside the frame so you won't see it. The rear Mac will be SRAM XX1 and I replaced the original cage with the Kogel Colossus. The cage actually added some weight to the rear derailleur but I really, really like how it looks and it has oversized pulleys so it should look really nice with the rest of the bike. Spinning well? Yes! Ceramic bearings. For the build I'll be using Garbrio cranks in a nice silver color. These cranks were released last year and I really, really like the looks. They come with the 52 millimeter offset chainring, which was custom made for me. Not only they look beautiful, but they also are super light at just 400 grams, which is only 14 grams heavier than SRAM XX1 white cranks. I'll be using Garbrook 1048 XD cassette in silver color that I use on my previous Spark and it performs great. As for the brakes, I finally managed to get hold of Trickstaff Piccola carbon brakes. Light SXC brakes on the market and if you believe the internet reviews, these are also one of the best performing brakes on the market. Unfortunately, this comes at a cost. I bought them with a small discount and still paid eye watering. 800 pounds and had to wait over 12 months to get them. This is crazy. Damn, I uh, hope my wife doesn't watch this video. And finally, the pedals are Crank Brothers Eggbeaters 11. These are the lightest mountain bike pedals that also offer really good mud clearance. And I've been using different models of Eggbeaters on my other bikes like Cycle Cross and Gravel. And I really, really like them. So yeah, this is the way to go. I'm sure you've been all waiting for me to finally shut up and start building the bike, so let's do it! Two hours later and I've got this. This honestly looks ridiculous, but I think it should work. Is it light? Yeah. I'm not a big fan of this yellow branding on the tires and it's quite big as you can see. So hopefully Sharpie will fix this. That's much better. Wow.
The bike is ready and it's definitely the best mountain bike that I've built in terms of the looks and hopefully in terms of the performance as well. I really like how it turned out. I like the raw carbon finish of the handlebar matching the raw carbon finish of the frame. I like the silver components on this bike. The wheels also look incredible and they are huge 2.4 inch tires on super light fast sports wheels. The sound of extra light hubs is amazing as well. Now the moment of truth. Let's check the weight of this bike and see whether I managed to achieve my goal. I believe I can fly. 949 kilograms and this includes pedal bottle cages and a garmin mount so if you compare this to the 15 southern pound version of the most expensive scott spark rc model this is a kilogram lighter and it's three and a half kilograms compared to the bike that i originally bought scott spark rc comb i also think that it looks nicer with the full internal cable routing and the custom paint job so what else to wish for? So that's all for today's video, folks. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, don't forget to put a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel, and also follow me on Instagram account. Yes, I have an Instagram account. It's called twisted underscore wheels. And I'm a bit more active there. I post more photos and videos from the rides. And also you can find some sneak peeks of the future builds. Thanks for watching. See you in the next video.